Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Cat's Cooking Kitchen. I'm glad to see you back here again today. And what I'm going to do this afternoon is make a couple cake mix cookie recipes, different from the spice cake cookie recipe I made last week. Our oven's preheated to 350 degrees, and this is going to be the same ingredients same amounts of ingredients, but I flipped them around a little bit. Today, the first recipe is going to be a chocolate cake mix with Reese's Pieces and white chocolate chips. A second cookie recipe I'm going to make is with a yellow cake mix with some trail mix that I had left over as the additive. So we'll get going here and start out just like we did on the other one. I need a full cup of oil between the two recipes, so I need to put in half a cup of the oil I have ready. Yep, there we go. Half a cup. And we have two eggs that go in each cookie recipe. So I have four eggs over here at room temperature. I use two in this recipe. And where's my rag? I like to keep a rag around to keep my hands dried off. We just break up these egg yolks a little bit. Just lightly. There we go. Put that in the bowl. And my attachment goes on. Okay, I'll put that down. We'll let that blend up real good for a minute. I have my Reese's cups, Reese pieces here. So these are going to be kind of a Reese cup kind of cookie with the chocolate and the peanut butter, and then the white chocolate chips. I think will go really well with the chocolate cookie. Okay, so now we have the oil and the two eggs are mixed in very well. Let me see. Can I can turn this around and oops, don't want it to go that fast. We're gonna be adding cake mix to it. Okay. I used to spread this around it, but I can dump it all in there like that and it'll get all mixed up just fine. Okay, that's mixed up pretty good. Kind of looks like a brownie mix or something, doesn't it? Because all it has in it is some oil and eggs. Now I got about 10 ounces of white chocolate chips and then my Reese pieces are about eight, eight and a quarter. So about eight ounces of those. Kind of mess around with the the amount that you put in them. They're going to be very colorful. I'll say that. And the nice thing about this, with the oil in it, it doesn't really stick to the paddle. Although I'll need to rinse it off before the next cookie recipe. Here we have our first one, and I'm going to take my spoonula spatula, my silicone one, and we're going to scrape this out into a different bowl. There we go. See how that came out so well? And all it needs is just wiped out with a paper towel just to get the chocolate out of it. I don't have to wash this. 
like I said, it comes out, the cookie dough comes out so clean. There's no real residue in it as long as you get up, soak up the extra oil and stuff. And let's see. Oh, this. And we're going to dip up the first batter and get it in the oven and start making the other cookie recipe while it starts cooking. And I use a, a scoop that I bought. Oh, I don't know how many years ago. I've had them forever. I used to make a lot of cookies when the boys were little. And when I had a chance to buy these little scoops, well, I don't remember how old they were, but I wish they'd had them a lot sooner. Okay. So, I'll push this back out of the way for a second. And my scoop. It's a little over an inch in diameter. So, inch inch and a quarter, something like that. And with this size scoop, you'll get 36 cookies. So, a little smaller than a walnut. Just a nice small, about a teaspoon and a half of dough. Maybe two, yeah. I'll have to check it. We'll check it in a little while just to give you a good idea. As you can see, there are still lots of color and candies in these. So, and this morning, I had a lady that I'd given samples to of the cake mix we did before that was with the spice cake mix. And it had butterscotch bits and heat toffee bits in it. So this morning early, I was up baking cookies because she'd asked me to bake her a batch of those. And I'm happy, happy to do that. She was paying me ingredients. That's all I wanted was the price of the ingredients and stuff. I'm, I don't get paid to cook. That's a whole different game. I'm not, if I was going to do that, I'd open a business. and I'm way beyond the years of wanting to do that. So, kind of wonder sometimes if we hadn't gotten transferred to uh, Lafayette, Indiana for 18 years and then Florida for two years, what would have happened here at home? But... You know, that's kind of water under the bridge. I don't think about it that much. Just would have been nice when I was younger. Okay, there's our first batch, and we're going to put them in at 13 minutes. Okay, now while that's going, put this over here, we're going to start the next batch of cookie dough. And let's start with the oil. Half a cup of oil. The recipe calls for canola. I never have canola. So I use vegetable oil and it works just fine. So that's so what I'm using today again. Okay. Got a little fork. Just break the yolks. Probably wouldn't even have to do that, but this seems a little easier to me. How you all doing? We're getting a lot of rain up here. And sadly, our 4-H horse and pony show will be this weekend out at our local saddle club, the Chief LaFountain Saddle Club grounds. And that's out on um, Salamone Extended here in Huntington. And it looks like it's going to be wet, wet, wet. So, that's too bad. I hate to, hate to see him having to show in the mud. But maybe 
the mud won't be as bad as if it was 95 degrees and humid. I don't know. I just hope the rain keeps the temperatures cool for the weekend so those kids can have some fun and enjoy showing their horses. And then in another, about, a, about another week, I think a week from Sunday, is when the 4-H fair, the rest of the animals and stuff will go into the... Uh, 4-H Fairgrounds. On, you can e enter it from Bryant Street or Evergreen Street in Huntington. That's one's on the east side, one's on the west side. Now we have to beat this up a little bit. It wants to. There we go. There we go. Yeah, this wasn't wanting to beat in very well. Okay. Now we have. We want to drip off. This looks like yellow brownie batter. It's it's thick, but it's not unuse or you know not untouchable. If you had to, you, if you don't have a scoop like me, let's see, what size spoon would I use? Let's bring this back here for a second. Probably about a spoonful like that. Let's roll it into a little ball and see what it looks like. Yep, that would be perfect. Just use your large spoon. I call them soup spoons, so bigger than I do my regular teaspoons. So we have that. And now we're going to add our trail mix to our cookie mix here. And like I said, I had about nine or ten ounces of it. Let me see. Let me make sure how much was in this again. I was weighing so much stuff. Oh no, it has a pound. <coughs> <coughs> and between the other two, we had <coughs> about 18 ounces. So this is fine. This is perfect. We have raisins. We have sunflower seeds. We have peanuts and M&Ms in red, white, and blue. So, I think that's going to be a really yummy cookie, actually. We have eight minutes left on our cook for our first batch of cookies. The next batch of cookies I make will be these. And after I'm done with the uh, cookie recipe today, I'm going to finish my... Uh, spaghetti and meatballs uh, dinner. So the meatballs were made separately on the other day and they've been refrigerated and so we're good to go that way. Okay, these are ready. Get this out of the way. Now we're ready to dip up the next batch. Like I said, it was a yellow cake mix with a pound of, the brand was Cars. I'm not sure where I got it. But it's just called a sweet and salty mix. Anything like that, you can use a trail mix, anything. Anything you would like in a cookie. I love pretzels in a cookie, so kind of sad this one didn't have pretzels in it, but it's going to be fine. Okay, here we go. Okay, and it's not, see, sometimes mine turn sideways, so I just put them on the right way. And they spread some, but they don't spread that much. So on these big half sheet pans, 
I can get a dozen. And so for one cookie box recipe, that would be three sheets full of cookies. This one, I'll have six because we're doing two different recipes at once. I was going to make them all anyway, so instead of just putting one of them on the video, I thought I'd just show you both because they're so different than each other. Anybody have any ideas? I, I made some lemon ones uh, that were called ooey gooey lemon cookies. Those were really good. That was not a cake mix but they were really, really good. And I still have a couple lemon cakes left there. And I did the ooey gooey cookies as cookies. And then I had another recipe for that's on there that are cupcakes that um, were turn, turn your cake mix recipe or your cake mix into a bakery uh, delight and, or treat. And that turned out really well, and I made them cupcakes, and it was lemon cake, it was lemon cupcakes with uh, a, a lemon-flavored uh, cream cheese icing. It was really, really good. So, I've got five more minutes, so hang in there, everybody. We'll be right back, and we'll show you the first batch of cookies as they come out. They do need to cool for a while before I can even pick one up and taste test it for you, but we'll get there. So hang in there. I'm so glad you joined us, and tell your friends, anybody that you know that might benefit from some different kind of recipes and stuff, and I hope you'll come back and watch me often. I post probably four to five videos a week anyway, so... Uh, I do take a day off now and then. Some days I just don't uh, have time or the energy to be out in the kitchen for a while. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pause you and we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. Our first batch of cookies are done. Let's check them. Oh yeah, they look good. Since I have my little fan out here going, that'll help cool them down a little bit. See those? Don't those look good? They look so good. Can't wait to try one. Okay, hang in there. I'll be right back. Welcome back again, everybody. Our second batch of cookies are done. And I'm getting ready to pull them out. The first set are on the cooling rack behind me. Oh, those look good. Aren't those pretty? how pretty those are. Okay. Another batch of the yellow cake mix. We'll get those all done, then go back and finish the chocolate. Thirteen minutes on the clock. Now let me grab one of these cookies over here. Look at that. Isn't that really cute? So pretty. All right, let's take a bite. Hmm. It's really good. You get the chocolate, you get the peanut butter, and you can even taste the white chocolate chips in it. It's uh, a little crunchy. Still soft in the middle, but I might try 11 or 12 minutes on these instead of 13, just so they they stay a little softer, a little longer, but those are really good. The chocolate ones are a winner, and now, wow, that sets up pretty good. Let me see if I can't hurry this along. <laughs> Just cool it off with my fan over here. Mm. 
Well, this one isn't as pretty as some of the others because they're all the pieces are hidden down in there, but it's got all the trail mix and stuff in it. Mm. Those are good with the raisins and the peanuts and the M&Ms. They're also a very good cookie. So, remember, this is just a cake mix cookie recipe. You get to choose what flavor cake you want to use. And if you're doing the spice cake that I told you about, the best thing to put in with that is butterscotch chips and Heath Bits, a package of each. And just the regular size, like the 10 ounce, I think the Hershey's are 8 to 9 ounces, the, the Heath Bits or something like that. Two eggs, half a cup of oil, and whatever flavor mix you put in there. It just doesn't get any easier than that. And you can have one batch ready in about 30 minutes. And you'll get about three dozen cookies out of each box. Depends on the size of your scoop or spoon, whatever, however big you make them. But they are really, really good and they're going to be a hit anywhere you take them because they're not going to be anything anybody else has had. Especially if you use the spice cake one. Let me show you here. I got, there's only two left of the ones that I took in for my friend today, but these are what they look like. And they are so, so good. They don't get quite as puffy as some of them, but I'm telling you, they're chewy and they're delicious. Absolutely delicious. Probably that one, and there's another cake mix recipe. It isn't as easy as this one, but it's not hard. But it has oatmeal in it. And I love oatmeal and cookies. So I really like that one, too. You can look that one up. Uh, it's at Katz, K-A-T apostrophe S, Katz Cooking Kitchen. You can find me on Facebook, and you can find me on YouTube. So if you're new, welcome aboard. So glad to have you. If you're not new and you're coming back, for a second, third, fourth time, whatever. I am so glad to have you back. I'm glad you're watching. I know several of you, several of you have commented that when's your next video? Because I'd gone a couple of days without one. And they were looking forward to seeing the next one. And that, that makes me happy that people are enjoying them. So I just do this for fun because I'm going to be doing it anyway. As I clean out my pantry and stuff. So I thought I'd share some recipes with people. And that's all there is to this cookie recipe, everybody. Look me up, Facebook or uh, YouTube at Cat's Cooking Kitchen. I do appreciate it. Stay happy. Have a great weekend, y'all. And we'll see you next week. Bye now.